Hello and welcome to the TTI Distribution Download, the podcast where we talk about all things happening in the world of electronic components with the specialists of TTI. Thanks, Jim. Hey, everybody. Thanks for plugging in to TTI's Distribution Download. My name is Chris Whitehouse. I'm a Supplier Marketing Manager at TTI. I have been in the electronics industry for over 30 years, um, one year here at TTI. This episode, we're welcoming John Holder, TTI's Technical Marketing Manager, Gustavo Jimenez, Associate Product Manager at Little Fuse, and Thane Parker, who is the Director of Business Development. Thank you all for being here today. This episode, we're going to be talking about Little Fuse's C&K brand, Switches and Solutions. John, happy to have you here today. Can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your experience in the industry at TTI? Yes, I'm John Holder. I'm, I've been in the industry for about 40 years, and uh, I've had various roles, roles in product management, sales, and supplier marketing. Uh, I've been with TTI for about 12 years, mainly focusing on uh, relay switches and sensor products. Thanks, John. Gustavo, could you tell us a little bit about your career at Little Fuse? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Gustavo Jimenez, and currently, I work as an associate product manager for CNK Little Fuse. I have been with the company for almost 25 years. And during that period, I have had the opportunity to work on many different types of electromechanical components, uh, switches and connectors. And at the same time, I have been able to perform on different positions and locations as part of the evolution of my career. Thank you. Thanks, Gustavo. Uh, and finally, Thane Parker. Ah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, my name's Thane Parker. I've been with Little Fuse 31 years, had various roles at Little Fuse from sales, uh, ran North America sales for a while, product management, uh, integration, and now uh, get the opportunity of director of business development for our switch and sensor products. So thank you for having me here today. So, Gustavo, what makes a tactile switch feel right? What gives it its, its, uh, its click? Hmm. The pure definition of feeling right is actually correlated with a perception. And that is what we call the perception of feeling. It depends on the perception from the user himself, the position of the switch in the mechanism, let's call it ergonomics, the application expectations, and actually the, envir the environment that is surrounding the system to indicate what feels right. We can say that we can have the right feeling on a product with a very strong activation force and a very high audible click. For example, let's say that a power on off momentary switch that can be used on an electrical vehicle can have these characteristics. It feels right because it has a strong activation force and a high audible click. However, we can offer you another example in where a very low activation force with very to with very low to non uh, positive uh, haptic feedback uh, can be used as an example for hearing aid applications. So. Besides the concept of feeling right associated with the perception of feeling, it is also interesting to indicate that today uh, other characteristics like sound intensity uh, come in play when we define what feels right for a tactile switch. Now, in the evolution of the design, uh, it is the responsibility of the design engineer at customer level to understand what is needed for their application in terms of this perception of it. Then it is our responsibility as designers and manufacturers of switches to understand these needs and transform them into numbers, into behaviors, into force displacement curves that will allow us to manufacture a product in a, a reliable and repeatable way. What are, what are some of the ranges of uh, actuation forces available for tactile switches? Yes, and they, they can have a variation. Let's say that we can go as low as 100 centinewton and we can go as high as 20 newton activation force. Now, all these parameters are correlated 
in the switch system. If we have very low force, it is most likely that the travel to make will be small, same as the tactile radio. So we will call this category a low force momentary detect tactile switch. Other switches that are going to be above to Newton will be able to generate a positive haptic feedback. However, higher the force, higher the level of stress produced each time a switch is activated and deactivated. So the perception of feeling, the tactile ratio, and even the life expectancy can be limited. So you will ask, why do we have so many forces for the same form factor? Why are they needed? And same as we explained before, they depend on the application, the ergonomics, and the interaction with mechanisms. We can play with force selection to generate easy activation, or the opposite is also true, to avoid a non-intentional activation, for example. What in a tactile switch design controls the actuation force? The tactile switch, as any design, is, is a complete system. It is not a complicated design, as its construction has typically four different elements. We have a housing that has the stationary contacts. We have a movable contact or dome. We have the actuator and the bracket. All of them do provide specific functions on switch design, but from force point of view, most likely the interaction in between the movable contact dome and the actuator will define this particular force condition. Other parameters on the haptic curve, like travel to make, will involve all the different component parts combined. Once again, it's a system with multiple parameters based on geometries and material selection. I see that uh, in some of your data sheets, you mentioned tireless life. Uh, what is that and what, what markets would benefit from its use? Tireless endurance is the pure definition of the evolution on a design for a tactile switch. We can have the same external form factor, but we have also new elements added to the switch in order to optimize one parameter. And for tactile switches, life expectancy is key. 10 years ago, for example, it was great to see 300,000 cycles. Now these days, for the same form factor, customers are looking for higher life expectancy. And not only that, they could be looking for longer life expectancy with higher activation force and higher tactile rate condition for their application. So definitely this is a challenge for our engineering team. So the advantages of having this kind of tireless life solution developed, definitely you can answer new market needs for the same type of application. So you're involved, you're involved with your cost. You have customers increase factor of safety in their applications by extending the minimum life expectancy. The new feature actually allows you to introduce this product into new applications. For example, the concept of a longer life expectancy on tactile switches can be used now as an alternative solution for game control units, for mouse operating buttons, and even behind the scenes on push button constructions used for elevator controls. So looking at the little few C and K selection guide, I noticed there's about nine different characteristics that uh, uh, you can choose from. Is there one that is most critical out of that, uh, out of that group? I would like to say all of them are critical. And I think the main goal is to help customers to follow the right sequence of questions so we can define the right tactile switch for the application. Not all tactile switches serve all markets and applications. As an example, let's say we will start defining the geometry, including the form factor, the mounting conditions, and the product height. We will then need to discuss with the customer what are going to be the ceiling properties or the level of environmental conditions that will be needed for the switch. This will help defining what will be the IP ranking, maybe material selection, and also define electrical rating and plating conditions. Finally, 
We will review haptics, in which case the discussion will move towards mechanical characteristics, mechanical parameters, activation force, tactile rate, travel to make characteristic, and the impact that it will have in the life expectancy or number of cycles for the product. So you will see that at the end, if we are able to have the discussion with customer and guide them through what is needed for their application, we will find out that we will be able to cover all the different points uh, on this particular selection of the switch, okay? So there, there's so many different sizes of tactile switches. The, the variety that, that CNK offers is, is uh, very tremendous. Uh, what are some of the, the current markets driving the application of new designs? I would say that smaller form factors are always the hot topic especially after the introduction of wearable devices, I think around 10 years ago. The interesting point here is that the reduction of form factors doesn't mean that we need to sacrifice specific features. Actually, the needs from customers in terms of performance are the same or even higher. So you will still need to achieve the right positive haptic feedback in terms of high force, and high tactile ratio with the, long, with the longest life that we can provide. At the same time, switches need to be totally sealed, so higher level of IP ranking is needed. One example of this is our tactile switch called the KMT0 product that is a very small form factor and actually achieves an unique IP68 condition uh, in terms of sealing properties. Our new product introductions, are they customer driven or, or market driven? I would like to say that in the world of electromechanical switches, most of the opportunities are always driven by specific problems to solve for a specific account. And just by the time the development process happens, there is a possibility for the innovation team to review the design and confirm if the solution that we are going to achieve is a result of uniqueness in terms of application and integration, or if this is going to be a result of a market trend, in which case we will work on extrapolating it once the complete development is done and customer satisfaction is achieved. Awesome. Thane, is there something you'd like to add to the conversation? Yeah. Uh and thank you very much, uh, John and Gustavo. Very good information. I just would like to point out to everyone, uh, as you can tell from what Gustavo stated, a lot of things to consider on switches, a lot of things that uh, you can, you can uh, uh, consider on your design from haptic feel, travel, things of that nature. Um, if you do have any questions at all about uh, your switch needs, you can always reach out to your local TTI expert. They're very knowledgeable about our switches. They can get you with the right people, or they can pull in the proper little fuse switch experts, our design engineers, application engineers, and help you select the exact switch you need. Awesome. Well, we certainly appreciate uh, John, Gustavo, and Thane for sharing your knowledge and insight on CNK's tactile switch portfolio. And we look forward to our next episode and our conversation regarding the unsung hero of biz building automation, the switch. And thank you listeners for plugging in with us today. Tune in again for our next episode of Distribution Download. That's it for this episode of the TTI Distribution Download. For more information on any of the topics you heard about today, reach out to your nearby TTI branch at 1-800-CALL-TTI or visit us online at tti.com.